Hello and welcome to my next video on enzymes. Sorry there hasn't been one for a few days but I've been very busy doing maths and other stuff. Yeah. Anyway, enzymes. Enzymes are globular proteins. They act as catalysts. This means they speed up the rate of reaction without being used up. They are specific. They will only work with one molecule called a substrate. A substrate will have a complementary shape to an enzyme's active site. The active site is the bit or the molecule that actually takes place in the reaction and actually will be the bit the substrate binds to. Um, enzyme function can be affected by pH and temperature and I'll show you that later. The human body contains thousands of enzymes used in many reactions. Any reaction that requires breaking of bonds such as hydrolysis of glycosidic ester and peptide bonds will require an enzyme. Any molecules that join together requires enzymes. All these reactions can take place on their own, but at such a slow rate that it would take too long and we'd all die. So the, um, the enzymes, what they do is they actually lower activation energy. And this is the amount of energy needed to start a reaction. They lower the activation energy, less energy is needed, reaction happens quicker. And it's estimated that one cell, just one cell, can have over a thousand different enzymes. So this is an enzyme. So there's an active site. This is actually quite a small part of the molecule. It can be 10 amino acids big, but often smaller than that but it's shown as a lot bigger in pictures, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it. If you have a substrate, this is the molecule that is going to react. Now, in enzyme control reactions, two things will either happen. Either the one I've shown here, substrate will bind to an active site, the enzyme will break the bond and split it into two little products, or it could be the opposite, two products form, joined together, new, bigger products formed. And this is the activation energy. Anyone doing chemistry will have seen this diagram a lot. So green is with an enzyme and purple is without. So at you have energy needed for a reaction. So you start off with the product, the react, sorry, start off with the reactants and amount of energy is needed, AE. This is the activation energy. This will start the reaction and that's all you need to know for this. And the enzyme lowers the activation energy. There are two models which are used to describe how enzymes work, lock and key and induced fit. Lock and key was the original method. This is, there's a complementary shape, there's the exact right shape for a, for a substrate, substrate fits in like a lock, fits well, like a key fits into a lock and it stays there and then until it's broken apart or joined together. But the more the newer model is the induced fit, which is more accepted. This is that the um, the shape of the enzyme is slightly different to the shape of the substrate. So the active site will be complementary to the substrate, but the whole enzyme structure will be slightly different. So it means that when the enzyme, the substrate will have to kind of push its way in, and then the enzyme will close around it, creating a more tight fit to prevent breaking away and it helps with the reaction. So factors affecting enzyme control and rate of reaction. Temperature. Now all particles are moving around randomly, colliding into each other. That's how a enzyme substrate complex is formed. Substrate randomly collides into an enzyme's active site and binds enzyme substrate complex. If you increase the temperature, these particles get more kinetic energy. So they move around more, with more energy colliding more, so you get more enzyme substrate complexes forming, so rate of reaction increases. That's good, but there's also a downside. It's not just the particles and substrates that vibrate and have more kinetic energy, so does the enzyme. The enzyme vibrates more. And what this does, this is breaks weak bonds, hydrogen and ionic bonds. Now, anyone doing chemistry, I know that ionic bonds are considered quite strong, but in this case, they're not. They're just, they are relatively weak. So the weak bonds, ionic and hydrogen bonds are broken. Disulfide bonds are not, but it's um, hydrogen and ionic bonds are broken. Now, this 
this changes the shape of the enzyme. Now an enzyme is a protein. If you lose the tertiary structure, it stops working. It loses its function, so it denatures. It doesn't die, it denatures. And here's a graph. So the rate of reaction increases as temperature increases to a certain point. It's the optimum temperature. And then it will sharply decrease the enzyme denatures. Now it can be different for different animals. For us, it's about 37 degrees, our body temperature. But creatures living in the Arctic, it will be much lower. Creatures living in, you know, sub-Saharan Africa, it could be much higher. pH. What pH is, is just a measure of H plus ions. If it's above seven, then there are OH minus ions, so we have um, hydroxide ions. If it's below seven, it has H plus ions, hydrogen ions. And at seven, there are none. Now, if certain um, enzymes will have, a, have hydrogen ionic bonds, which include charges, they, they are sometimes helped by H plus OH minus ions. They actually, because H plus and OH minus ions interfere with these charged bonds. Sometimes it's useful because it helps keep the structure of the enzyme. But if you change the balance, if you add more H plus or remove H plus or add OH minus, remove OH minus, then the shape will change. The, the bonds will, the, o, the hydrogen and ionic bonds will be changed in a different way to how they're supposed to. So you lose the shape, denatures. This is why um, enzymes work in a very narrow range of pH. Also though, active sites can have, can be polar. They can have charges, hydrogen, ionic bonds, those sort of R groups. More H+, plus, less H+, plus, more OH-, minus, less OH- minus can affect the active site, changing that so it's not complementary anymore, so it can't bond. Now, like with temperature, enzymes, certain enzymes work at different pHs. You will have some which work in a very neutral pH of seven, but let's say the ones in the stomach, they're going to work at a very low pH, one or two. And that's pH. Concentration. Now, if they ever ask what are three factors, concentration comes, creates two. Enzyme concentration, substrate concentration. Mention them as individual ones. They're not the same. But I decided to put them on one because they're very similar on how they work. You have more enzymes, there are more active sites, so there are more substrates can collide with more enzymes, creating more enzyme substrate complexes, rate of reaction increases. Substrate, same thing. You have more substrates which collide into the enzymes, so that increases rate of reaction. But to a point, um, it's the same for both substrate and enzymes, but I'll use enzymes as an example. If you increase enzyme sub concentration, rate of reaction increases, but eventually, you will have so many enzymes that there'll be that that all the all the substrates are creating enzyme substrate complexes. So if you create cre put more enzymes in, there'll be no more substrate molecules to bind with them. So the rate of reaction will stay the same. It will not increase any further. It plateaus, as you can see on the graph. This means that substrate concentration is a limiting factor, and it's the same for the other way around. Enzyme concentration is a limiting factor of substrate concentration. But however, as you see by the dashed line, if there was an infinite amount of enzyme and infinite amount of substrate and you kept increasing enzyme concentration, it would be a straight line. Inhibitors. Inhibitors reduce the rate of reaction. They will bind to an enzyme either at the active site or away from it. And there are two types, competitive enzyme, um, competitive inhibitors and non-competitive inhibitors. Firstly, competitive inhibitors. I've just drawn pictures for this. Competitive inhibitors have a very similar shape to the substrate. So the one that's coloured in is the inhibitor. As you can see, that can easily fit in to the enzyme. So what it does, it binds with the enzyme. It can be either for a short period of time or permanently. Um, and it will mean that the substrate cannot, can no longer bind with the enzyme. The inhibitor doesn't react because it's not 100% complementary but it still fits in with the enzyme. And it means that rate of action will be decreased. This happens at the active site. Non-competitive inhibitors work by binding to the enzyme away from the active site. But this changes the whole 3D structure of the enzyme, changing the active site shape. As you can see, the little ball there goes into the enzyme and adds a little kind of blob into the active site. So no longer can substrate fit in. A enzyme substrate complex cannot form. 
rate of reaction de decreases. Now, here is a graph, what happens? Now this is, this is substrate concentration against rate of reaction. So as you can see, the first one, normal plateauing. With competitive inhibitor, as substrate concentration increases, it just creates a straight line. Non-competitive, this is because competitive inhibitors can only bind for a small amount of time. They can be permanent, but they're usually not. Non-competitive inhibitors permanently denature the enzyme. So very quickly, you get a much less rate of reaction. Yeah, so that's the graphs. One other thing to mention is that they could at rate of reaction is fastest when you put when you start the reaction. And this is because at the beginning of rate of reaction, there's the most number of free enzyme active sites, most number of substrates. So most collisions will be happening, so rate of reaction is higher. So it will naturally slow down as reaction goes on. So it won't be a perfect straight line ever, but it it's fastest at the beginning because there is more number of enzymes and more number of substrates have unreacted. Cofactors. Some enzymes require cofactors. These must be present in some enzymes for them to work. They can be organic, inorganic, or a number of things. There are three types. Coenzymes. These are small organic molecules. They are not proteins. What they do is they are used in the reaction. So they will be a part of the enzyme. They'll be used up and turned into something else. Let's say coenzyme A is used in an enzyme reaction, turned into coenzyme B but they are recycled. So cause for every reaction, if you have a, let's say, condensation reaction to build up glycogen, so loads of carbohydrates joined together, you then want to break it down again. So these coenzymes are used up and then recycled and changed back. So if you have A, it goes to B when condensation reaction is happening, but hydrolysis will change it back to A. So they're recycled and used again and again prosthetic groups. These are a permanent part of the molecule, usually a transition metal, zinc, iron, um, and they contribute to the 3D structure. Hemoglobin. Um, now that's not an enzyme, it's still a protein. It has prosthetic groups. It has, you know, iron, which binds to oxygen. It's, it's, the, it's without that iron, hemoglobin wouldn't work. And it also changes the 3D shape. And as you say, iron, transition metal. You also have inorganic ion cofactors. This just increases the rate of reaction because since it's charged, it helps attract the substrate. So it makes it easier for enzyme substrate complexes to form. And that's it. There isn't too much on enzymes. Usually you'll either get loads of questions on kind of describing inhibitors and rate of reaction, or you'll get a question on the experiments involved in enzymes. Now, I am not incorporating that into my video because it'll take a very long time. But if if you go into the textbook, there's just there is two pages investigating enzyme action explains it perfectly there. So you just need to read that, and that's all that'll ever come up. But it's usually just common sense. So questions. Only two. Describe how a competitive inhibitor works. Explain how an increase of substrate molecule affects rate of reaction. So you have some time to th think about it and pause the video. Good, right, so describe how a competitive inhibitor works. It has a similar shape to a substrate. It is complementary to the active site. It binds to the active site for a limited time and it prevents an enzyme substrate complex from forming, so there's less products. So that's how it works. And then explain how an increase of substrate molecule affects rate of reaction rate of reaction is increased because there's a greater chance of substrate binding with active sites, creating more products, but eventually it'll reach Vmax. That is basically, it'll reach the maximum rate of reaction because there's no more active sites available, so rate of reaction stays the same. That's it. So, quick conclusion. Enzymes are globular proteins, they are catalysts. They have an active site which binds to a subs which substrate to bind to. And then they will, this speeds up the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy. Enzymes can be affected by pH or temperature. Rate of reaction is also obviously affected by pH, temperature, and substrate and enzyme concentration. 
Enzymes also need cofactors, or most do. That is coenzymes, prosthetic groups, and inorganic iron cofactors. And also inhibitors, competitive and non inhibitors competitive and non-competitive inhibitors which slow down rate of reaction and that's all you need to know basically so I, I'm sorry I haven't been able to do a video I wanted to do a few more but I've been very busy I had to kind of rush this one today to make sure I got it done for you but yeah I'm getting good feedback just if you want to um, ask any questions leave comments in the video description in not the video in the video or in the discussion section on my channel email me my email's in the description or message me on the student room I, some of you have monroe tf7 is my username there and yeah just tell me what you want next it might slow down the number of videos i can do so make sure you tell me what your absolute highest priority is but i have covered a lot of the course actually for anyway for um f212 let me just let me just see what I've done. Yep, I've done all of um, biological molecules. That's all done. Nearly all of biodiversity. It's got to be on evolution. So if you want that, I'll do it. But it's not terribly difficult. And I've just got food and health. And food is particularly easy. And I don't really enjoy it. And health. I might do health as the next video. So yeah. I've basically got a maximum of three videos left on this section if any of you guys want it. So just tell me what you want next and I'll do it. Or try to anyway. So yeah, thanks for listening and goodbye.